So we've seen the names of the first two scale degrees, the tonic and the supertonic. The supertonic, the second degree, is a major second from the tonic. This is the same for both major and minor scales. It doesn't change to a minor second in minor scales like other major intervals do. Why is this? What is the supertonic? It's the major second, but it's also the fifth of... The fifth of a fifth. The fifth of the fifth, which makes it a, a kind of important milestone, let's say, you know, in our division of the scale. So for that reason, it's the same in both major and minor scales. Our only major interval in the minor scale is the major second. So what is the supertonic of C major? D major. So C major is the scale, but I'm asking you for a note. No? So what's the name of the note? D. D. Perfect. We know that in C major we have no sharps or flats, so we can just count up D. So what is the supertonic in C minor? Also a D. Also a D. Good, of course. And in A minor, the supertonic is? B. B. Good. And how many half steps do we have from the tonic to the supertonic? Or in other words, how many half steps in a major second? Two. Two. So from C to D, that's C, C sharp, D. Two half steps. The fifth degree of the scale, the all-important perfect fifth from the tonic, is called the dominant. And the dominant has the opposite role to the tonic, to home. As we saw, it generates tension to return to the tonic. If the tonic makes us feel home, the dominant makes us feel like we are in a new domain. The dominant is the furthest note from home, and in this way, the word dominant relates to the word domain. If the tonic is home, the dominant is somewhere else, a new domain. When we hear the dominant, we feel musical tension to return home, to return to the tonic, like a stretched elastic waiting to return to its resting position, or boiling water wanting to cool. That's the perfect fifth, the dominant. The dominant is boiling or frozen water, the tonic is the water at room temperature, or something like that. That's what makes this excerpt of music, which is the theme tune to the movie Schindler's List, so imposing or so dramatic. One of these notes is a tonic, and one is a dominant. Which is which? Where is the tension, and where is it relieved? The tension is relieved on the first or the second note? The second note. Good. We play an A, and then we play another A an octave higher, then D, then A, then D. So one of these is the tonic, and one is the dominant. Which is which? Okay, right. So yeah, the second note sounds like you're going back home. So that would be the tonic then? Yeah. Bravo. The second note, no, was the tonic. That's where we go back home. That's where we feel a release of tension or even a justification of, of, of the A. No, it helps us understand what scale we're in. So, so A is the dominant. It's when we play the A that we feel the tension to return to D. So what key was that in? Or in other words, what scale are we using? D major. D. Now, we wouldn't know yet if it was major or minor, because we haven't heard enough notes. Only the tonic and the dominant we've heard, which are the same in, in both keys, you know? If I continue, though, you should be able to say very quickly if it's major or minor. And what was that minor? Minor, of course. It feels minor. No, there we experienced the minor sixth and the minor third. B flat, the minor sixth in D minor, and F, the minor third in D minor. So generally speaking, the tonic degree of the scale feels like home or resolution, and the dominant is a faraway place, a new domain. If we play a chord, we can feel that much more. So if D and A is the tonic and the dominant, and we are in the D minor scale, we can play D minor and A minor chords 
to feel that tension and resolution occur on multiple levels. So first you're going to give me the notes of the D and A minor chords. So D minor first, the chord will have D, no? It's perfect fifth, which is... A. A, good. So now we just need to find the minor third, no? Which is three half steps from D... F. F. So that's D minor. D, F and A. That's on the band on your own. So that's D, F and A. No? So A minor, A minor chord, what notes are we going to have? So we have the tonic, which is A, the perfect fifth, which is? A. E. And what's the minor third there? We know that A minor has no sharps or flats, so... G. We want the, the, the letter between A and E, no? A minor third from A. C. C. So this is A minor. And if we play A minor and then D minor, we can feel this resolution occur, you know, on more levels. Can you feel that? So there's that tension and resolution, that, that musical relationship between the tonic and the dominant with chords. So the first two degrees of the scale are called the tonic and the supertonic, and the fifth degree is called the dominant. These degrees, as well as the perfect fourth, the fourth degree, which is just the perfect fifth the other way around, are the same in both major and minor scales. So if in A minor, these degrees are A, B, D and E, the first, second, fourth and fifth degrees, we know that they are the same in A major too. So the second degree or the supertonic in A major is? B. B. And the fourth degree of A major is? A. Count up four, including the letter you start on. D. D, of course. The third degree, as we know, is major in major scales and minor in minor scales. So, what is the third degree of the A minor scale? The third note in the A minor scale? C. A C. Now, giving us a minor third from A, or three half steps. A, A sharp, B, C. What is the third degree in the scale of C major? which also has no sharps or flats, just like A minor, no? E? E. And here we have a major third. So why is C to E major and A to C minor if we are counting three letters in each case? Is it because we pass over a small interval? Well done, exactly. It's because we have two half steps between letters, with the exception of B to C and E to F, which is just one half step. From C to E, we don't cross any small spaces, no. We have a whole step, or two half steps, from C to D, and again from D to E. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. If we go from A to C, we have a small space between B and C. We know that B to C and E to F is just one half step. So the third degree of the scale, be it major or minor, we call the median. So the median of C major was? E. E, of course. And the median of C minor is? Um, e minor. So E minor is a scale or a chord, of course. So if you want to reduce the note a half step, you don't say minor, you say... Sorry, um, um, flat. Flat, well e done. Flat. E flat, no, because we know that in major scales we have a major third, in minor scales we have a minor third, so if we have E in C major, we're going to have E flat in C minor. So the median, whether it's E in C major or E flat in C minor, it's still the median. It's the third degree of the scale. So the median is the mid-ground between the two opposing poles of tonic and dominant. 
The name median also reflects its role as mediator of the minor versus major chords. We have seen that both major and minor chords share the fundamental and the perfect fifth. What decides or mediates whether they are major or minor is the third. Median also relates to middle, and in the major scales, the median falls right between the tonic and the dominant. And just how when we cut an octave in half, the two halves are not equal due to the phenomenon of perspective, the same goes for the median when we cut the space from the tonic to the dominant in half. If we look at A major, for example, we can have an A at 440 Hz, a C sharp at 550 and the knee at 660. We can clearly see that the C sharp is in the middle. 550 falls right between 440 and 660. Yet, from A to C sharp, what interval do we have? Uh, third. Perfect third. Uh, there's no such thing as a perfect third. I'm oh, no. sorry, um, um, major third. A major third, no, which consists of four half steps. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp. And from C sharp to E, what interval do we have? Minor third. A minor third. C sharp to D is one half step, then D to D sharp, D sharp to E. That's two more half steps, three in total, giving us a minor third. So the point is that when we split the space from the tonic to the dominant in half, the first half is a major third, A to C sharp, and the second half is a minor third, C sharp to E, even though they are equal in number. Again, they're not equal musically. So when in the major scale, the major third cuts the distance from the tonic to the dominant in equal halves, the halves, once again, are not equal musically. We have a major third and then a minor third. In minor scales, the median creates those same two intervals between the tonic and the dominant, only now the minor third comes first and then the major. So we see the same phenomenon of perspective as with the perfect fifth, again with the median. A space divided in two equal parts is not creating two equal intervals because of the phenomenon of perspective. Our standing point or point of empathy, our key to accessing the music, the tonic. And of course, the median only divides the space between the tonic and the dominant in equal parts in the major scale, where it represents number five in cardinal counting. Or 1.25, once scaled down, no, five, halved, 2.5, halved, 1.25. So 1.25, of course, falls right between 1, the tonic, and 1.5, the dominant, the perfect fifth. In the minor scale, the median is alluding to the relationship between numbers 5 and 6, the minor third. So if you want to build an E major or E minor chord, the first and easiest thing to think about is the tonic and the dominant, which are? The tonic is A. Uh, so E major or E minor. So the tonic is? E. Good. E and the dominant? B. B. So E and B for both chords, no? For E major and the minor. The note that will decide, that will mediate whether we have a major or a minor chord is the median, the third. So what letter is a third from an E? Just give me the letter. G. A G. Now, so if we start with a straight G and see how it sounds, we can decide whether we found E major or E minor. Does that sound major or minor to you? Sounded minor. Minor, yes. We can check our understanding, checking for three half steps for a minor third between E and G. Do we have three half steps between E and G? Yeah. Can you go through them for me? Uh, e, F, F sharp, G. Well done. E, F, because we only have a half step between E and F. F sharp, G. Three half steps. So what note does the E major chord have instead of G? How would I work that out? What changes between an E minor chord and an E major chord? A half step. All you need to do is make the minor third, E to G, a major third. E to? G sharp. 
G sharp, G sharp. So should we hear that? So what notes does the E major chord have? A, B and G sharp. Good. E, B and G sharp. That's like the order we think about it in, no? Because it's easy to think about the tonic, the dominant, and then find the median. But the most standard order for the chord is for the letters to occur in the ascending order, no? So E, G sharp, B. Tonic, median, dominant. But if we change them around, there's still a, a E major chord, no? But the most standard version would be E, G sharp, B. And of course, we will notice that we're always skipping a letter. To build our simple major and minor chords. No. E, G, B. No. A, C, E, D, F, A. So talking about E chords, we are also talking about the E scale or E scales. Or to say all of that more simply, we are talking about the key of E. What's the supertonic in the key of E? F. How, ma how many half steps do we have from E to F? Oh, so it's F sharp. Well yeah, done. So yeah, so it's, it's only one from E to F, right? F sharp in this case, no, because we have from E to F and B to C, just one half step. So to get two for our major second, we need a sharp here, F sharp. E, F, F sharp. And I could ask you, of course, for the supertonic of the key of E in this general way, because it's the same in both major and minor scales, no? Being the dominant of the dominant. So what is the supertonic of G major or G minor? A sharp. A. A, good. What is the supertonic of B major or B minor? C sharp. Well done, C sharp. It's C-sharp here because from B to C, we have a small space, only one half step, no? And so two half steps give us a C-sharp. Between B and C and between E and F, of course, we have only one half step, which makes E-sharp and F, for example, or C-flat and B, in harmonic equivalents. They are the same pitches, but different notes, seen from different perspectives, different scales, different keys. Even though E sharp and F, or indeed F sharp and G flat, for example, are the same piano key, the same button on the piano, in one scale, that piano key is a B flat, and in another, it's an A sharp. But it's the same key, the same button on the piano. But it would be difficult to say it's the same sound, although it is. That's because, depending on the musical context, whether this button on the bandagnon gives us a C sharp or a D flat, or whether this one gives us a G flat or an F sharp, whether it gives us, say, the median in one key or the tonic of another, this will change how the note sounds to us, even though the note is the same note. And that's the magic of perspective, of subjective counting. 